<laughs> okay, we are now recording. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, this is Jerome Fitz of the Withdrawal Journal Brothers and Piranha Publishing. Uh, today's date is November 28, 2021. I am interviewing the directors and producers of Ridiculous. Redonkulous. 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 <laughs> and I'm happy to be corrected on that one. Yeah. Um, in regards to the world of reminiscence. Road to reminiscence. reminiscence. Like, there we go. What is that? <laughs> hey, that's that's fine. <laughs> now, who's cold and who's not? <laughs> and it's cold in, in, in Casablanca, Morocco. Okay, look, the, the film is phenomenal. Um, I am I'm curious as a journalist um, about what have the critics said, or if there has been in a state of a distasteful culture of, of not being able to be critical because the objective of the film has been met. I'm sure, you know, no one can dispute that. What has been the response thus far in regards to your trailers, press, local press, and of course your red carpet? Um, first of all, don't care about criticism. The movie was made with love. So that's, that's first and foremost. But with that being said, I guess when something's made with love, you receive love. Every so far, all the criticism was wasn't a lot. It was local, it was a family movie. Uh, it was all love. It was all uh, okay. It made people cry. Yeah, <laughs> they could see the love that we put into it, the the, the hard work, effort, right. the, just how personal this was. That came through the screen, and that was the ultimate goal. Obviously, um, a lot of absolutely. Uh, uh, a lot of people like the way uh, we infused every element of a documentary into it and made it a redonkulous, redonkulous style. Redonkulous. <laughs> so you put your 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 new brand on it. I mean, you've got have a comic series that is quite good, you know. And what and, and allow me to correct myself when I said mm, critics. I mean, any response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. any response because. Again, and, and just as you correct me, we can't correct love. You can't criticize love. Love is right. love. And you can't legislate love. You can't dictate love. You can evaluate it. Beautiful. Um, where did you get, let's start over again, uh, just for our, the viewers on this and as it will be cut. Um, where did you get the idea of and how long did it take? to complete the project. Sure, absolutely. Um, so this had been something that we had been talking about for quite a few years now, actually. Um, just our team has known each other for the better part of 30 years at this point. So, you know, as you grow older and you lose people, that that's something that they don't teach you. They don't tell you when you're growing up that the, the people that mean so much to you, who are the rocks in your life, essentially, who are the the cornerstones of your being of your life that those people will someday pass and a lot of us had um you know again we've all grown up together and so each parent loved one aunt uncle each passing affected all of us so it was something that we have been talking about for a long while um the catalyst for it that really made us say okay this is exactly, this is what we're going to do and we're going to do it now, was the unfortunate passing of Kevin's mom last year. And sorry. she had passed from breast cancer. And at that point, we said, enough is enough. We have to hold this event. There's, there's no, who cares about Corona? You know, who cares about all the chaos that's going on in the world? This is something that we have to do now. You know, so, and then, we started realizing, of course, that there, there's a story here. There is a journey here. And that led to the actual making of the documentary. There's a lot of little stories in here that can be told um, as to how we were able to make this event happen, how we were able to put all of this on. So that's where the basis of the documentary came from. Okay. 
good. And it, it, it was obviously not scripted because it was from the heart. Right. And there was a community, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the last time we spoke, um, all of you knew each other. Everybody that did pass was a part mm -hmm. of that community. So, mm -hmm. and we can't, you know, we can't stop life. We can't stop time. And no one can prepare each other for um, individuals passing. You know, you can't brace yourself for it. You, you, don't, you don't know what, what feelings we're gonna have in the future. Right. Correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, okay, so that's, that's, where, that's what initiated the idea. How long did it take you guys to compose the complete documentary and make sure that there was an equal interest in each person that was passing? Or a better term of making sure you don't leave anything on the table of how you felt for that person passing. So the actual making of the documentary took us about uh, 18 months. We, uh, once we decided to make the reminiscence, once we decided, okay, we're doing a reminiscence, it was April 7th, the day after my mom passed. The day after my mom passed, I got out with this entertainment, I said, I want to do this. They said, let's go. <laughs> okay. From right that point, we also said this story is bigger than just the event itself, which is the biggest. We can also keep the story alive. We can also immortalize people. Let's make this our first ever movie because it comes right. from passion. It comes from the love. Right. Yeah. So we didn't know what that would lead us to. So we just we just did it. We went with the flow and everything. We just recorded everything via just right. talk. This is real life tragedy we're talking about here. So. Um, and now as far as everybody getting equal screen time or equal share or equal anything, it's so much passion and love behind the movie that that was never even discussion. It just all naturally came together. Just like, just the way the sun, same way the sun rises and sets every day, the same way it just flows. <coughs> that's so it, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the same yeah, way. it is. So it so, was a blessing, a blessings of conglomerate efforts, right? Yes, nothing yeah. scripted here. This is, this Nothing scripted. Nothing's like, oh, let's let's do this or let's do that. It's nothing scripted here. This is everything is real. And then putting putting a real story together, I think it's easier to put in a fictional story together. You know, we mm -hmm. make comic books. We know how to make mm -hmm. a story. <laughs> you know, that's a big deal that we make comic books. I can't emphasize that. Um, we're writers. We're entertainers. So we know how to make a story. So this was right. the first story. Me as uh, the co Kevin, the co-founder Martin. Um, one ape owner of Redonkless Entertainment because I'm equal to everyone in there. Uh, but I am a storyteller. This was like the easiest story to tell because it's true. It just flowed. It was no like, I have to use my imagination. Right, yeah. I think the, the most challenging part of it was kind of, okay, we lived it. We know exactly what happened. So now we have to really break this out and tell other people who may not be familiar with our story, who may not have come to reminiscence and really break down all the little things that led up to all of this. So much happened. Yeah. So, so interesting. Much, so much happened. So it's the only thing I, if I had to criticize our own movie <laughs> is I feel as though we could have even made it longer, but we decided, you know, the fairness of interest, keep it an hour and 41 minutes. Right, right, right. And, and jumping on the, the, the saturated process of a series is something so heartfelt. Yeah. It's a never ending it's a never ending story. Yeah, it's right. never ending it's, story. It's, right. it's, it's, it's a it's a never ending story. Um okay, look. Part two, part three might come I don't I, 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 <laughs> and, and, and and pardon me if I'm coming across insensitive, I'm just getting straight to the point. You can cut that point, right? Um the example set for the film in regards to communities. These days, and this is speaking on a worldwide term, life and death is so prostrated that through a delusional world of like replacement, mm -hmm. people go through things, you know, you've got games that glamorize trauma. You've got films that, and people make music that expose a trauma. <laughs> And 
people are saying the same things more or less at eulogies. God prayers for family, God bless the family, blah, blah, blah. but the people that are affected, it takes them years and sometimes never to get over of letting go. Do you think this is your way of setting an example for others to keep the memories of your loved ones, but set an example of letting it go and continue on with the life we have? Absolutely not. This is Redonkin's entertainment at its fullest, maybe rawest arrogance. We wanted to immortalize our family members. That's what all. That's what this came down to. We, as a family, as a unit, wanted to immortalize our family members. We didn't have how this would affect anybody else. In mind. This was a personal. This was a very personal, intimate movie based off. I, I don't know if it's arrogance, but it was based off what we wanted. We didn't really consider the outside world. We knew okay. we wanted to immortalize. Our loved ones, my mom, her grandma, Lavar's dad, for example. Let me just piggyback off that sure. really quick. Um, I do think that in some way this was a bit of a process of healing and a process of closure for some of us too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for you know, for those of us who didn't really get to, to gain closure, you know, some people. They put their emotions into their art, into the music. You know, they express their emotions in a lot of different ways, especially grief. Grief is difficult. It's really, really difficult. And so I think for us, this was our way of, in a sense, healing. In, in, a, in a way, healing. And also, um, you know. Good wow. <laughs> it, it, it was, yeah. Wow, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this was definitely a, it was tough. It was really, really super tough, but you gotta go through the tough stuff in order to- That was my point. That, that was my point. It's an example. A lot of people didn't have the courage to go through that toughness. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, you know, and, and no one can judge anyone else's feelings. No way. Um, you, you and can not judge anyone else's feelings, yeah. No, and no one can tell you how you're feeling. Nice to say, by the way. Right? Um, this is a good interview. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, okay, good stuff. Getting juices flowing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the whole point, right? Uh, to from the worthwhile journal point of view, we we try when we created this thing eight years ago, ten years ago, um, we set out to make it personal. That wasn't a blog, and to do thought processing, anything, whether it's articles, the films, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is why this film stood out to me. Um. What, five weeks ago? Four weeks ago, five weeks ago? Four or five weeks okay. ago. So, okay. Back into the cut position where we're going to cut this thing. Um, okay, look. How did you, as a community and loved ones, how did you come up with the delegation process through the love? Because, look, emotions are running high when people are reminiscing about the loved ones. You're going through the hurt. You're going through things. And it is a selfish part and you've got to tell each story. How did you delegate the production part? Yeah, thanks. Um, so we're Redonkulous Entertainment. We do everything as a unit. <laughs> we do everything as a unit. Um, and of course, you know, when you have that many people, each person has their own strengths and has their own things that they particularly excel at to, to make the whole. That the same way we approached comic books was the same way that we approached putting on the reminiscence and then doing the documentary itself. The same rules apply. Um, some are better at like script writing and some are better at storytelling and some are better at uh, visuals, so on and so forth, uh, music. So we use our same talents and use our same uh, outlets to make this a success because everything we do is based off of the talents and the love and the passion of nine individuals. And I think that's what really makes this so such a special and personal project. Interesting. Everything is personal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so you 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 already had your production scenario 
done and then said, okay, we're going to do this based on us this time. You know, you have your comics and they're like, okay, that makes, makes perfect, perfect sense, sense, right? Um, making yeah, a movie and making a comic book or, or two peas in the same pie. Just one might be a light sheet, one might be dark. That's the only difference. It's the same process. Production, crew, actors, film, lights, it's all the same. It's just, okay. yeah, it's not okay. all the same. It's similar, it's real similar. Right. Do you it's think hard you would, do, do you think you would take some of the characters of the film and implement it into a comic book or a comic book series? Because no. there's different individuals. No, this was uh this was film based off real life. Our comic books are based off our imaginations. Yeah. We're not gonna cross the two. The two different mm -hmm. uh interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um <clears throat> When you mentioned, I was watching one of the trailers, we were watching one of the trailers uh, four nights ago, um, when I actually, a week ago, when I felt guilty of not being able to do the, the last, so I downloaded the trailer and watched them, you know, through my mm -hmm. travels. Um, when you mentioned the belief, does that pertain to your faith of seeing your loved ones again? Or is it your faith, belief, in accepting God's plans or God's schedule. May I? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to like over talk, so I'm more this, but may I? Um, when we talk about belief, I, I would say, I would summarize that as in our belief to make our dreams happen, our belief to <laughs> get this project done, no matter. And again, we, we, for all intents and purposes, we picked a really crazy time to do this, <laughs> okay, with last year, 2020, and chaos yeah. and everything, but we had belief in ourselves that we would get this done no matter what. Um, Lydia, may I? Absolutely. Also, so let's go take a back history we this in the tape. Let's rewind real fast. This is a big deal. Me and LeVar were in classrooms, and we were teased because we were making comic books while the other kids were being the other kids. So we grew up uh, always kind of teasing out on the outskirts of things, but we stuck to to what we believed in. So we have strong beliefs in ourselves. Our dream was to make a comic book. That comic book became six comic books. That comic book, those six comic books became a movie, a cedra, a clover line, etc. So we believe in each other. So this movie is always based off believing in each other. Okay. But like okay. Tanya said, I just I, mm -hmm. I had to get the history why our yeah, belief, yeah, yeah, yeah. when we say that's yeah, why we're yeah. stuck in every Donkey's revolution. That's real simple. It simply means believe into your dreams. Yeah. Okay. Like well, it was, it was, there was, there was a text that came into the trailer, which is why I was referring to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes. Easter egg. Um, ah, you seen it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, I, I looked at all of it. I looked at all of it. I, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Jerome, um, if you read our comic books, and then if you read our comic books and looked at our trailers on our comic books, you will find so many Easter eggs. I would. I would love to interview you in February about that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll, get that. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. And I, I, I'm going to get home soon. To, I'll give you a mailing address, right? Um, sure. Um, sure. Okay. Look, the music chosen for uh, the film, was that a part of the character's favorite music, or was that chosen by each one of you guys uh, individually? <laughs> Oh man, that's a. I I mean I can. Okay. Because it it, 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 it varies. Okay. It, it varies. It varies. Um, you have... It was a bit of a combination, actually. Um. So, we did uh last year. We actually did videos for each of the honorees. Um. And we did those on social media. And those videos, uh, and they were basically like tribute videos for each of the fifteen honorees. Um, and so those videos included a lot of the music that each of those people really loved and that uh, would have fit each of those people's personalities. And, and right. what made that also cool was it was based off uh, people dying, uh, heavily passed over music. So we equated to their style of music with a song that fitted their style of music mm -hmm. for the reminiscence. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So interesting. Yeah, so every single song you heard would be, um, we use uh, yes, I don't want to use yesterday. 
we used a song by uh, LaVar's aunt, Shirley Queen, yesterday about Boys the Men. Mm-hmm. She loved Boys the Men. Right. She loved Boys the Men. Her life, she loved that group, okay? And then this song, which was a sad song about a breakup, but if you listen to the lyrics now, as we showed her that body, they're like, wow, you was just alive yesterday. Right, 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 right. point each and every song we picked mm-hmm. and chosen for our honorees. Right. I know you had, mm-hmm. That's just for the honorees. Then, <laughs> then there was also the music for the movie uh, itself, which was also very carefully handpicked, uh, depending on the mood of the scene, depending on uh, just kind of what the theme of, of that particular scene right. was. Right, because right. the film itself takes you on an emotional journey. It takes you on a real emotional roller coaster. It does. And yeah. so we really it tried it to, does. <laughs> yeah. And we re- and that was so important that we tried to emphasize that with the music as well. Like we knew that was the case with the story, but emphasizing that with the music as well. Let me get the next one. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and <laughs> we wanted to make sure we hit every single one of our people. So when we picked this music, we thought of every person from the ages of five to ages of 80, that they would know this song and it would fit the theme. That's how much thought and detail of who our, our, our triggered audience is, our, mm-hmm. our, that yeah. we took the time out to be like, okay, we use songs from the nineties, which is Redonkless Time, mm-hmm. all the way down to- uh, out Back to the seventies and things, yeah, seventies, eighties. You've, 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 you've got school. some guitar strings in it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, <laughs> Okay. Thank, Look, you. Thank you. You, you, you. You mentioned you mentioned um, that the film was personal to you. Your objective was look. It was you didn't care what anybody would would have. Right. Okay. These days, people call it a selfish art. Selfie, right? But oh. um, it's commendable. It is commendable. That's why I mentioned the example set that maybe someone else can say, okay, look, this is a way of, of, of letting this go. I mean, some people, it takes 10, 12 years to write a book about what they experienced to get, to get it out of their system. They have to find a way how. So you're blessed in that. That's, that's why I mentioned this conglomerate of blessings that a, a lot of people can't do it, okay? Um, in saying that, um, and this, this is going to kind of hit a nail on the head or, or ignite one. And we'll probably continue in another way. And even, look, if we dispute it, good. I, I mean, my objective. Um, but what, when, when, when you compiled it, when you finished and you rubbed your hands and you cried and you hugged and, and, and whatever you did when you completed it. <laughs> but how did, how did you... What was your objective, right? Because everyone cannot, you know, all films are not for everyone. Mm -hmm. So what was your objective when you said targeted audience? What would be your targeted audience? It wouldn't be a funeral home. It wouldn't be a boys and girls club. Uh, Oh, okay. I I can answer this. I know, yeah, I I got this. Um, The Redonkless Revolution, the one person that follows Redonkless every day, that one person, that one or a hundred, I don't know the number, but whoever that one person was, that's the targeted uh, audience, that one person. There's there's one fan of Redonkin somewhere out there. I made this movie, we, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. We made this movie for you. Yeah, but that's Kevin's uh, thing. I know Tanya, she um, thinks she's a, <laughs> she's a big. Um, <laughs> I would say uh, the target audience was anyone who understands the power of family. Family oh. is a big theme. It is the overall theme. In this movie, in the making of this movie. And just when we put it together and watched the finished cut for the first time, I was overwhelmed. I know myself speaking personally, I was extremely overwhelmed because it's really something to see something so personal and something uh, so intimate, I guess, kind of really take life and really take form and just to, to see and to, to hear everyone talking and rejoicing and just kind of watching this. I, I watched this as a, you know, as if I'm the viewer, I guess, well, again, this is us watching it after we uh, finished cut together. I watched this as a viewer and just I was overwhelmed with joy. 
So. <laughs> I wanted to cry in the beginning. That's all I was saying. That's the Easter egg. Well, <laughs> it's the, well, I want to well, cry in the beginning. Well, you know, you know, look, you hit on a key element of, of how we're going to continue in this globe of ours. You know, as we're disintegrating, the power of family, family is love. A lot of us don't know that. A lot of us don't appreciate it. A lot of us, those are missing elements. And those are some very powerful words to close it out with. You know, the power of family, um, which can lead to to a, a number of, or an array of questions. But what would you leave people to encourage them to watch the film? Leave people to encourage them. What would, what, what would be, what would be, what would, what, what message could you leave or could you give to encourage people to want what you've done. You know, this is part of promotion. This is a part of, this is outside the interview. This is what, what, what would be a, um, a meta data quote. You gotta believe. <laughs> there we go, we're back to belief. We're back to believe. believe. We're back to belief. That's why I touched That's the word it. I keep coming up. You gotta believe. Belief. You gotta get regardless. You gotta believe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I would That's add good. to that. that definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and also for those who are working through their grief, finding a hard, can't really find a way to work through their grief, that there is a way. That there is a way to 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 work through your grief to. Um, to, to be able to, I guess, to, be, to not to get over, because I, I don't think we ever really get over uh, someone's passing, but just to, it does, it gets better. It gets a little bit better, you know? Right, right. It, uh, okay, okay, look, would you, would you categorize that, or could you categorize that in, in a parallel um, situation of trauma? Trauma's a, trauma's a big part of, of grieving as well. I've suffered it, everyone's suffered it. And this is your way of, of overcoming that trauma, of letting it go. Again, I'm not a big fan of letting it go. I'm a Pisces. <laughs> oh, me too. To <laughs> me too. I, I, hold on, I hold on to everything. And personally speaking, you know, I, this is a part of the interview, and it's just the written part. Um, I'm trying to find a way to put the words together where you go. Belief that there is a way of things getting better. And this could be a, an example. Again, I'm coming back to the example. Yeah. Like that. Okay, look, try this. <laughs> try writing it down. You know, I, we all speak in our mind to, to, to individuals. I, you know, a lot of people, people can't write, write music and you know, write stories and write their autobiographies and things. You know, we just decided to do it in a movie form. You know, it was funny. <laughs> I didn't know none of that. <laughs> yeah. I, now that we're talking about it and I'm listening and I'm thinking about, I guess, yeah, it's real fair to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's what, that's the way what I did with my mom's death is I made a movie. Right. right. Yeah. Well. Well. well you know. Look. 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 In a sense. In a sense. Right. I think. I, I, I think. I, I think. We, I, anything you guys want to add? Because what I don't want to do is water this down, the intensity of it down. And if I have something else prior to publishing the the the, the print version of this and into the film festival program of it, um, as well as when you get. Yeah, mm -hmm. when you guys when you guys send me this recording back, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I'm still, I stop dancing with these. Tell channels. us we're done. We're going to send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you anything, you guys, <laughs> anything you want to add? That that. Yes. You know because I don't I, look. Yes. I, I don't well, want. I don't want to water down the intensity of things. You, you understand? You. Sometimes we can overdo it. Let me uh, let me ask you a question. What are you doing in the month of February? Which is Black History Month for us, or Redonkulous Black History? What could I do for you? No. What are what you doing? What are you doing? No. What are you doing? That, what are you doing? Do you have uh, Do you have a day free where we can interview you? Yeah, pick a date. My birthday is the twenty seventh. 
His Pick birthday one. is the Whoa, 27th. Whoa, that's the same day as my daughter. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. My daughter, she's February 27th, and I'm February 19th. My son's well, February 19th, Pisces. too. Wait, my yeah. son. Your son, yes. Listen, yeah. My daughter's March 4th, Pisces. Victor's in definitely. the movie March 1st. Uh-huh. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. as in the movie, my son's in the movie. Tell us, tell us, me on it. Give me, um, give me a su- give me a subject matter of, of some of the people that we should commemorate. Um, no, right? no, 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 no. We're not going to do none of that. We're not going to do none. Of that. We're not going to so, do none. Of that. <laughs> what we do uh, also is that uh, on social media we do um, what we call ridiculously ridiculous interviews. You're going to be on season two. So we did it last year. And that was season one. This is season two. But we like to interview different artists, creative entrepreneurs, um, and we like to do the same thing. Really kind of ask the really great questions, get to know you, um, have our audience get to know questions. you. <laughs> our questions are going to be very easy. They're not going to be You know what? You know what? Leave them on the table because... Oh, don't worry. I'll, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's stop recording. <laughs> okay, okay. Stop recording. Stop recording. Okay. Gotcha. Recording it. Stop. On. Wait, wait. Okay, hold on.